the one and only Petros and Money Show, the 10th annual summer tour. And we're here at Hangar 24 in Irvine. A lot of beautiful people here, and it's absolutely wonderful. Happy Father's Day to each and all of you. We have a very special guest, a man that really does represent local excellence, Matt, and a hell of a guy to talk to. Yeah, uh, I mean, local through and through. Los Al High School, UC. Let's go Griffins. Exactly, go Griffins, let's go Bruins. And we talked about it at the top of the show, Pete. We've been doing this for 17 years, and it feels like it's been a hell of a run and a long time. But imagine starting a punk rock band when you're 17 years old in 1980 and in 2023 you are still banging out shows selling out venues traveling the world and keeping it going and that is what our man joe escalante is doing he and some friends founded the vandals back in 1980 and with david and josh and warren they're keeping it going they got a show on the third at the glass house they got a show on the 29th the sweet and tender hooligans at the pacific amphitheater for the oc fair and he is a host and a tour guide at the brand new punk rock museum out in las vegas wow. you can book a tour with joe july 20th to the 23rd. On top of all that, P, Law Degree used to host the morning show on Indy 103. I remember that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and, all, and a former TV executive at CBS. I mean, my God, a renaissance man when it comes to the world of entertainment. It's Joe Escalante on the Mountain View Chevy Celebrity Headset. Ah, the Mountain View Chevy he Celebrity Headset. Yeah, we go to Upland if you want to take Feels a look good. at some Chevys. Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Appreciate it. Oh, hey, good to be here, you guys. Is it weird to hear, hey, you started a band in, in high school and, and you're still banging it out, looking yeah. like a, a real champion at your age? Yeah, it's like being a birthday clown, you know? It's just, <laughs> yeah, I know. Just kids, the, the kids are there and you're uh, doing tricks for them. Is this, hey, you like this? You like this? How about this? You know? How does it start? Is it, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life? Is it, we're going to go have some fun and get free beer at parties? Like, what, what, what is the genesis of starting a band? You start a band in punk rock because you, you, you could start a band on a Monday and you could play a party on Saturday. <laughs> you know, all these guys are, are, are you know, learning to play Stairway to Heaven. And, you know, I graduated at, from Lost Salad 81. So this is like, you know, the Cal Jam era of Ted Nugent and all that stuff. But we literally could start a band on Monday and play a party on Saturday. And so uh, it was fun. And then, you, then you're playing clubs. And then you don't think it's going to last. And then you keep giving it up. And then all of a sudden, Green Day and the Offspring and that stuff blows up and then all of a sudden your phone starts ringing and you quit your job and you tour the world for 10 more years and you, wow and, and then you um, then you come back it was um <laughs> is that hard though i mean we, we we do five events every summer and matt and i act like we're really put out yeah no, nobody years. nobody likes to do it every all the band members are like, i wish i could figure out a way to just make money staying home but now <laughs> that nobody buys records you got to get out there so we just went back to our jobs. That's what we did. So That's when, how we solved that. The, the, like the Vandals are, because, right, you know, as, as Petro said, we've talked to guys when we do the summer tours. We've talked to Mike Watt. We've talked yeah. to Mike Ness. We've yeah. talked to guys from Bad Religion. We've talked to, and, like, when you think about punk rock and you sort of think about, you know, double middle fingers to the man, we're kind of counterculture, the Vandals yeah. took a different lane. You guys did that, but you did it kind of with a sense of humor Whose idea? Because you wrote Anarchy Burger. I mean, you've wrote Pirates Life, all that stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. like, how do you guys decide this is the lane we're going to occupy? I think because I mean, I grew up in Rossmore, uh, right over by the 405 and the 605. Are there? I didn't. Ha we didn't have any problems really. You know, the <laughs> Clash, good. the Clash, yeah, the, and the Sex Pistols. Um, uh, they, they have problems, so they're singing about social uh, issues, and and we didn't. You know, so we like Devo, we liked uh, the Dickies. Uh, we liked the toy dolls. We liked these funny bands, so we just kind of stayed in that lane because what am I going to do? Uh, you know, grow up in Orange County in the sunny, you know, the, the <laughs> family Rossmore. that loves me in Rossmore and, and write uh, 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 political songs? Yeah. Oh, Rage Against the Machine did it, but I don't yeah, that's what they did. It is. That's the exactly main streets right. of Irvine yes. is where they came. Hey, this is a tough place. Sony. Look at this business park. Something that I got a switchblade in my hand right now to defend myself. <laughs> Joe Escalante <laughs> is with us, the great bassist for the Vandals, founding member, and a TV executive, and we will get into that in a little while because we have deep interest. Oh, big time. Deep interest in the paranormal, Joe. Oh yeah. So we will get into that. But does it? I mean. 
it always we do a stupid sports talk radio show. You've been here long enough to realize that. And we're always, always dumbfounded at the people that relate to it and come out. I cannot imagine how that must feel globally from a band you started at Rossmore. You know, uh, down, <laughs> down the street, that's, that's you funny. know, down the street from from the racetrack. Yeah. You know, the corner horses on a Sunday night. Right. You know, what is that like? What is one of the weirdest places you've been? Where the crowd, you know, they relate to you guys in a way that is just unexpected. Well, you brought up Germany uh, earlier, I remember, and um, Matt did. Yeah, that, that was always <laughs> weird. That's like you go there and you're happy that they know you, and the, but then the interviews always start with, "So your new album is uh, junk, uh, and so, uh, how are you feeling about this right now that nobody likes your new material?" You know, so <laughs> very straightforward. Yeah, that's how they are. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we, I mean, we played all over the world. We played in Afghanistan. Well, I was going to say we that, played yeah. in, We played in Iraq for the troops. We, uh, it, it, you, you can't put a price on it, um, uh, the, the things we've been allowed to do, and uh, we're still allowed to do it, but we do it in a way where we just kind of keep our jobs and, and do both because I don't, when you get old, uh, do you really want to be singing and dancing on stage, uh, you know, a 60-year-old man? Uh, Here we are. I don't know. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's like you're a, like a frog in the in the boiling uh, pan. Like pretty soon you realize. You, oh, you're, this you, is this is how it ends. You've been you've been in this band. <laughs> you're 60 years old. What, right. What happened? <laughs> our uh, all of us know Christine Fung really well. Yes. And uh, I got to meet David Quackenbush, your lead singer, through Christine long time ago, 25 years ago. And I remember sitting at a dinner, I'll never forget, I don't remember what show we were going to at the Troubadour, but we were sitting at Dantana's, and he was talking about, yeah, I think we're going to go play for the troops. You yeah, know, oh, we've, yeah. we, we've, we're, we're kind of trying to figure out if we're going to do it or not. It was before you went to Iraq, yeah. and I think it was 2004, yeah. right around there. The Christmas of 2003, New Year's Eve in 2004. So, wow. and, and I remember it sounded like it was something you guys were really trying to sort through and figure out. So when, that, when that's kind of you know, offered to you or you're thinking about it, how do you kind of go through going to a war zone and, and playing a punk rock show? Well, uh, our, Dave, our singer, he always uh, is, puts it in perspective for you, and he goes, the war was, the war was on. It was on. Right. It, was as, it was heavy as it ever got in 2003 to 2004. And he just said, we might die, but what a great way to die. <laughs> and yeah. that's a, yeah, you yeah. know, that's what you say, like, if you're flying in a plane that's uh, being uh, flown by Dexter Holland from The Offspring, right. you might die, but what a great way to die. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, we went and we did it, and it was crazy, and the war was going on. And, um, but I, I will tell you, the, the most um, uh, important thing I feel I've ever done is gone there to cheer them up during the holidays when they have a lot of suicides. Finally felt that I'm, I'm playing this music for a reason, you know, because uh, we already talked about our lyrics. We're not changing society. Um, but there, for a brief moment, we felt important, and I think it's the most important thing we've ever done. And uh, it's the highlight of my whole life, getting in a, 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 getting in a, a, a Black Hawk every morning and uh, sitting uh, in some field waiting for these... Uh, uh, well, we'd wait for the Black Hawks to arrive. We'd get in our, the band in one, the, the gear in the other, and they'd fly us off to a forward operating base. We'd get out, play the show, Fly back, go back to the uh, Saddam Hussein uh, International Airport. And the, the war Darn. is going on all the around. War is going you. on. You can hear it, you can feel it, uh, and uh, it was. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. And then we then we got boycotted all throughout Europe for doing it. Uh, it was it was a disaster in Europe. They hated us for it. And then we uh, looked at each other. What they said, you guys were like pro war or something. Yes, they conflated the two. You know, I uh, think the war, supporting the war, and playing for the soldiers. Everybody in America knows you got to support the soldiers, whether you support the war or not. Right. Everybody knows the vandals who write songs about like sandwiches and haircuts. <laughs> uh, don't, don't try to get a political message out of us. So they, but they didn't understand that in Europe, and they. Um, so we never uh, really went to Europe again. Wow. To hell with them. To hell with them. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Half yeah, of yeah, it, they yeah. can't take a joke. Exactly right. There's um. So people that don't know, or maybe they do, but for po folks that don't know, your drummer. Uh, since like 89 has been Josh Freese, arguably the best drummer on the planet. Yes. Um, uh, he is a gun for hire in studios. He was just named the new drummer of the Foo Fighters. Uh, is the story true of how you found Josh Freese? But first of all, best drummer on the planet, he's not even the best drummer in the Foo Fighters. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but I've, uh, I told that to Dave Grohl, and it, oh, he lost it. He just lost it. <laughs> love that. Um, then he used it on stage the next night. Um, uh, you stole my joke, Grohl. <laughs> I'm yes, sure Freeze you know, was hey, thrilled. Hey, Blink-182 <laughs> made a career out of it. You right. Know, so... Um, he, he uh, my material is out there for everybody to, to take. But yeah, <laughs> we found Josh at Disneyland in the in the Tomorrowland stage. It comes out of the ground, <laughs> and uh, we went and, we went and tracked him down, and we got him in the band, and uh, he's been in the band for about 35 years. And then we let him go and play whether it's with Sting or Devo or uh, Perfect Circle, and now the Foo Fighters. So we're very happy for him because we you know we think he's in the greatest you know touring recording rock band in the world today is probably the Foo Fighters, and he is perfect for the job. So Wonderful stuff. Before. So, like, yeah. word spreads, like, hey, there's this drummer at Disneyland, and the stage comes up from the ground in tomorrow, you got to see him. He's going to blow your mind. Oh, we had annual passes. Uh, so <laughs> Quackenbush and I had annual passes when they cost $125. So that's really how you found it. Yeah, him. with no blackout dates, and we would go see that no guy. No blackouts. Yeah, think about it. Uh, it was like a dream. Uh, <laughs> the, the, so we, yeah, we, we, I mean, we, we hunted him down, but you know, and in those days, you could talk to a, 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 a you could talk to a young kid at Disneyland without getting arrested. You know? <laughs> That's before everybody had the vest and the Disneyland gang. Yeah. Right. Oh God, don't yeah. get me started on those. Geppetto's angels. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, the, the, <laughs> the Speedy Gonzaleses. Exactly. Uh, wait, wrong uh, studio. Sorry. Ah, they bought it all. Yeah. <laughs> the great Joe Escalot. This guy's unreal and a fun guy to talk to. Now, he he does some really really interesting work in television. He's a TV executive. And that is something that people are very afraid of in the world of television. Oh, yeah. You hear TV executive. I'm a show, well, I was an executive at CBS, but now I'm a showrunner on a couple of shows on Fox Nation. All right. So, executive producer. Right. Yeah. That's, you're an executive. Yeah, that's true. Like, you show up and say, the network has some notes, and people are pissed. Yes. <laughs> We've got notes. Exactly. <laughs> Before got we notes. get to that, and we'll do it in the next segment, quickly want to mention uh -huh. uh, July 3rd, Glass House. Yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, the Vandals at the Glass House, July 3rd. It's the night before July 4th. We right. do this a lot because people on July 3rd realize they don't have nowhere to go. You know? Vandal we show. We've got a Vandal show at the Glass House. I there we go. That. Pomona. And then July 29th, you're doing the Sweet and Tender Hooligan Show at Pacific Amphitheater. That's the Morrissey Smiths, um, the Mexican Morrissey. Exactly uh, right. At the at the uh, July 29th at the, uh, the OC uh, Fair. At the OC Fair. Awesome. In the big room, on the big stage. And then July 20th to 23rd, book your tour now for the punk. Oh, we didn't ask about that. Uh, yeah. Just the Punk Rock Museum in Vegas. Yeah, it's it's great. It sounds like. Uh, uh, like a terrible idea, and then, it, <laughs> and then you go there, and they, they put a lot of money into it, which also sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> and uh, luckily, most of it was Fletcher's and, and Fat Mike's. Um, so, it, but then when you see it and you do the tour, you will realize this thing's going to last. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a quality museum. It belongs there, along with the Mob Museum and the Liberace Museum. Uh, rest in peace. Um, exactly but right. It, but it's... Uh, it's 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 definitely worth going to, but you got to take a tour with one of the old timers, and the uh, older the better. And so I recommend Joe Escalante on, Good on call. July nice. there we 20th. Go. Where there we is go. it? It's uh, just right off the freeway, uh, a little towards downtown, in some area that my Tesla drives me to, and I still don't figure out uh, I, when people ask me that where it is. <laughs> so a freestanding building. Go. Yeah, I industrial park, it. free brick, brick and mortar, an industrial park like yeah. the one we're at exactly today. Exactly right. This is, isn't this is where they filmed the Conquest of the Planet of the Apes or something? That's exactly right. I you believe it building is. Right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, get your damn hands off me, <laughs> goddamn dirty ape. We'll be right back with more Joel Escalante. We're going to talk about his show because you know we we are very very heavily involved in the paranormal big time you know shadow people mayan calendar chemtrails lizard people oh i like that we've seen v <laughs> how about the bat squatch of mount saint helens oh, yeah. half bat half sasquatch i'll blow your mind with that one holy yes. crap right? how about that might have to carve out another hour <laughs> joe escalante <laughs> is here we'll be right back it's the petrosin money show live from beautiful hangar 24 thank you for being here we're having a hell of a time sweet james bergener thank you for sweet james if you're hurt in action call the winning attorneys at 809 million or sweetjames.com barry's tickets don't miss the next game or event you want to go to let barry hook you up at barry's tickets.com chef Merito, the chef, the spice is in the container, but the chef is in you. Did you give anything away during the last break? I did, I was talking to Joe. Up here chopping it up with Joe Escalante. Exactly. That upset the uh, safari uh, 
guy there. Safari drape. Yeah, the what safari drape on Justin Herbert. What was the name of the song? I've ape got drape. an ape drape. Ape drape. Yeah, the Joe, band cover. How old were you when you wrote the song? Ape drape? Yes. Uh, I was 35 or something like Writing that. Writing a song yeah. about mullets. Yeah, just kind yeah. of going through the, the bullet points. The heights of not, maturity. Not, exactly. not, not, yeah, not funny. <laughs> not fun, not funny. But, but you got know a what? couple of guys Very in their catchy. 40s in flight suits up yes. here, Joe. And exactly. we're, not, we're not playing in Iraq either. Exactly. Uh, the great Joe Escalante from the Vandals is here. Yeah. Also... A huge television exec type, and what we're most interested in is that he's the writer and producer and showrunner for Alien Abductions with Abby Hornacek, Hornacek, Jeff Hornacek's daughter, who used to touch yeah. his face, and then uh, <laughs> and then Monsters sure. Across America on Fox Nation. Which with, we're really excited with Casey about. Casey Hosmer. Yeah. Eric Hosmer's wife. We right. love Hosmer. Yeah. Now, this is important to us because it goes along with something we like to call here because we're the Petros and Money Show, PMS. Mm -hmm. PMS, as you are familiar with the Art Bell Show of yesteryear. Yes. Coast to coast. Mm -hmm. To talk to talk to PMS, PMS call the wild card card line at 866-987-2570. The first time caller line is 866-987-2570. To talk toll free from east of the Rockies, call 866-987-2570. From west of the Rockies, toll free, call 866-987-2570. Send PMS a text message anytime at... From the gateway to the west, this is PMS Coast to Coast AM with Petros Papadakis and Matt Money Smith. <laughs> now, a TV executive will make something about something that they're not that interested in. But I'm sitting here thinking that you're pretty into, you're pretty into the coast to coast stuff, Joe. Like you, like you, this is a passion. this floats your boat. Like you like this, this floats stuff. your boat. You're into this like we are. Yeah, I, I was, uh, uh, you know, I read all the books when I was a kid, and then uh, I wrote for Ancient Aliens for four years. Come on. And then uh, <laughs> I sold my own show to Fox Nation, you know? That's awesome. You work for Ancient Aliens, anyone will have a meeting with you, because it's a, it's a hit show, and they want to know how they can have one. So, uh, yeah, that worked for me. So what do you do? You walk into Fox Nation, you say, I got, uh, I got Hosmer, and we're going to bang this out, and they, they buy it. Uh, they bought something else, and then they called me back and said, hey, put a pin in that. Casey Hosmer wants to do a show about monsters, and then pitch us that. And then you go back, and you write something that she will like, and then, and then see if they'll buy it. So uh, that's what I did with the monsters. And then later they said, oh, you did pretty good with monsters. What do you know about alien abductions? I go, I know everything. 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 I mean, what are you going to say? Well, couldn't an alien abduction also be, like, considered a monster to a certain degree? Yes, they are. Uh, there's monsters. There's the, these aliens, uh, if, if they exist, to me, are demons. So they are monsters. Okay. We should not be friends with them. <laughs> yeah, I don't like them. No, we shouldn't baptize I, them. Um, shouldn't nothing. make deals with them. No. No. Well, their technology yeah. is far superior to ours. We're having enough trouble with freaking chat, GP, and AI right now. What the hell are we going to do with aliens? Yeah, well, you just got to, yeah, so don't, don't make friends. I wrote these down. Okay. Sound advice from the bassist of the Vandals. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to call this an elevator pitch or okay. a summary, but walk us through the Provo Bigfoot. The Provo Bigfoot is oh. part of uh, not really Mormon um, uh, theology, but it is a Mormon tradition that there is a, a, a Bigfoot. Uh, it's... it's um, the monster is Cain from the Bible, and he roams around. Uh, he's doomed to roam the earth. The mark of the beast. To pay for his sins. And uh, the, the, in Mormon lore, they, they, at some point, he turned into Bigfoot. Oh, okay. So it is a Mormon Bigfoot. Makes sense. Yeah. And he's right. in Provo. And he's in Provo, which is where the, um, they train the missionaries. Right. In, uh, in you don't want to be in Salt Lake. You want to be a little uh, bit low-key. A no. yeah. little bit low-key, but big enough town. Yeah, yeah. How about the uh, Sarasota skunk ape? Oh, the Sarasota skunk ape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a skunk ape, um, and he's in the swamps of, uh, of uh, near outside Sarasota. How did he get there? Uh, my theory, which was uh, substantiated by many experts in that, uh, in, in that episode, <laughs> was that the it, is the it is the winter home of the Barnum and Bailey Circus is Sarasota. So the trains are coming in constantly, and they crash. Okay. So a train crashes. The sideshow oddities run away from their cruel masters when their cage uh, breaks open, and all these uh, wild beasts, and they all hide in the, uh, in the swamps 
And that's my theory of how, how the skunk ape was made. So they mate. They mate. And, and you, then they produce from the skunk a cir- ape. a circus accident. Yeah. The oddities accident. of the circus and a wild animal. Yeah. I don't, I don't like ape. to call them freaks. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oddities. Right. Yes. That works. Yes. Um, <laughs> the Chivo Man of Santa Paula. Oh, I'm interested in this. That Chivo Man is really called the Billy Whack Monster, but the network wouldn't <laughs> let me call it the Billy Whack Monster. We'll because, let you do that on AM radio. Yeah, it was well, it was tied to a, a, a family that's still alive, and and their it creeps around their dairy and their property. So a lot of people go looking for it now. It's in Santa Clarita. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you look up Billy Whack Monster, you can go and and um, harass these people. It's that, an awesome uh, town. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. So what does he do? He walks to Magic Mountain. He has, a, he has an annual pass. <laughs> <laughs> and he throws rocks at cars. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like every eighth grader in the Santa yeah, Clarita yeah, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the chupacabra of Arizona. Oh come on, we, we all go. love the chup. Chupacabra. Everybody loves the chupacabra. Chupacabra. You know that's one that's a well-known monster. I usually do more obscure ones, but I, that was a bone I threw to the network so they could um, have a have a uh, a monster that people have heard of. Sure. And it's you know it's a part dog. It's part. Uh, demon, and it's uh, it, maybe it, it, it was first sighted in uh, Puerto Rico, right. came through Mexico, and is now invading the American Southwest, particularly Arizona. And it's yeah, and it's uh, it's it's most commonly seen in blurry photos. Go figure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go off script, and I'm gonna ask about uh, like those cows that get like all gutted and out and stuff. That yeah, they do. yeah. What's up with that? Yeah, is it, that a monster? I, I think those are. Um, uh, alien. They, uh, they the best guess is they're aliens, which is a, a pretty bad guess because we haven't even we don't even seen any aliens. So the best guess is something we haven't seen. Right. Um, uh, that's a mystery. I, that's above my pay grade. I don't know. Wow. Don't know what it is. You know, it's not above your uh, pay grade, Joe. What? The bat squatch of Mount St. Helens. Oh, the bat squatch. He's part bat and he's part sasquatch. Does he fly? Uh, yeah, he flies. And uh, there's a kid that saw him. It's a pretty uh, credible story. We went and interviewed. That guy wouldn't talk because it ruined his life. And we, so Is we, that right? Yeah, we talked to his mom and the reporter that reported the first story in like the early 80s of the sighting of the, you know, it's just a big bat squatch with uh, a, a, a sasquatch with wings. <laughs> the theory that I developed is why is it there? I'm just trying, always trying to find sure. it. Why is it in this town? Mount St. Helens eruption. Okay, volcanic. Wasn't seen before that. So the hole in the in the hollow earth opens up and the bat squatch comes it out. It blew out of the Makes earth. Makes perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. So we got a guy with a, with a book this thick on the hollow earth and we... Right. We... Uh, just He's like, oh yeah, bat the, squatch, no we, doubt. Yeah, we, we we worked him to get all the the, the secrets, and Abby Hornacek uh, got to the bottom of that. Well, mystery. she's good. She's yeah. good that way. When the next uh, season of one of these shows comes out, will you come back and promote it? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, because yeah. we would love that. Okay, yeah. you kick ass, Joe. Thank You're you. a great guest. Thank you. A you guys back. are great. You have a great show. Thank you, Joe, and thank you to Joe Escalante, everybody. And how about this, B? You can listen to Joe. Yeah. 5 to 7 p.m. on AM 1150. He's head to head with us? Five, seven, Sundays, Sundays only. Oh, okay. Sunday. Sundays only, All 5 right. to yeah. 7 p.m. Our friend Joe is part of our iHeartRadio family. Oh, yeah. my God. How about that? I didn't even know that. These guys didn't even no know that. No idea. <laughs> it was written somewhere. <laughs> right? It's all Hollywood. We talk about Hollywood business. Right, exactly. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Hollywood business. Which you know a little something about. Let's turns go. Out. Yeah. CBS executive, showrunner. It's, uh, live from the, uh, the from Hollywood adjacent, which is really Burbank, across the street from a wiener schnitzel that sells beer. That's yeah, right. that's right. The yeah. greatest wiener schnitzel in all of Burbank. Period. <laughs> Olive Avenue wiener schnitzel. That's where all the construction workers go. We're just going to wiener schnitzel. You want to have a nice dogs. beer and some really bad lighting? That's where you go. <laughs> lighting. Fluorescent lighting. <laughs> Raise a glass to Joe Escalante, the Woo! Vandals. Thanks, guys. The and best. so many wonderful shows. Shows, but right now, Alien Abductions with Abby Hornacek and Monsters Across America. Fox Nation. Fox Nation. And go see him at the Glass House July 3rd. Yeah, tickets on sale now. You better be doing a Christmas show this year. Every year. Damn right. Every year. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you, Joe. We'll be right back, Matt. Uh, Irvine has sent a representative to the show.